Hi, today I'm going to run through creating your first quote in Ascora. I'm just going to log into the system. So once you log in, you're initially taken to the main dashboard. From here you can see any tasks that are due today or overdue. You can see a breakdown of the time summary, so effectively your utilisation of time over the last week, and the job profit and loss over the last week or so. You can also see any kind of user licences that may be expiring soon. And user licences can be things like either site induction or trade certifications. I'm just going to drill across into the customers area. So from the customers area we can filter by customer type or lead source. And you can define these either through the administration section or from the customer details themselves and create as many as you need to. The search screen on the far right basically search across all fields on the customer in lightning fast speed. And it also searches on partial matches. So you can here, see here we've got partial matches based on customer name, uh, suburb and email address. We can also search across phone numbers. So we have a match here on JS Promotion. So I'm just going to drill into the customer details. This takes me directly into the customer screen. From here, I can see everything that's linked to this customer and all the actions I can perform against them. So the top bar has all the different action commands, so things like send SMS and send email. So you can create templated SMS or email out to the customer. You can do batch payments. You can create new quotes. You can create new jobs, either from fresh or from a template. The details below, the main detail area shows us the site address and the billing address. And the address details here use Google Autocomplete to help you fill out the card easily. You can also see the customer type and lead source to be allocated to, as well as assign a different billing customer if there's someone else that usually pays the bills on behalf of this customer. Going back up to the main tab area, you can see any kind of contacts that are linked to the customer, any pieces of equipment they have that you may be interested in servicing, any current quotes that are attached to them, any jobs, invoices and attachments, as well as any kind of notes and history against this customer. We can also see from the tab details that we've already got one equipment, two quotes and one job, just based on the indicators here. I'm just going to go ahead and create a new quote for this particular customer. So this just takes us to the quote details page. And from here we can fill in a few other bits of information. We can see the site customer and billing customer have come across automatically as has the quote address. And we can override any of these bits of information as we need to. The quote name is an optional field. It really just allows us to give it a bit more of a descriptive name so we can find the quote easier in the scorer. We can change the job type based on what we've set up and this will also affect how the job will look on the schedule. We can change the company if it's a multi-company setup. We can change the pricing method. So Time Materials basically adds on for every single item you add to the quote, the price will automatically increase. Fixed price allows you just to specify the, the price yourself based on the items. Where sections will break this quote up into a lot of mini quotes and individual mini pieces can be scheduled individually too. The template type. So it's a template that we can use to generate this quote. Right now we only got the one standard quote. But it's important to realise that the quotes in the scorer can be created any number of ways and it's completely customizable through Word. And you can just drop in the mail merge fields. You can use any existing quote you have now and we'll step through the whole creation of quotes more in a later video. So I'm just going to enter a quote description. Just go ahead and save the quote. And as soon as it's saved, we can see the rest of the action items on the top have become active, and we've now got additional tabs. So we can see the supplies and labor, the bookings that are there for this quote, any attachments. So if you've got different plans or blueprints, you can drop them on. You can also record separate notes against the quote. Uh, right now, I'm going to drill into the supplies and labor. This is the most important for where we are now. And from here, we can add on any kind of kits. We can add on write-ins onto this quote. We can specify the details individually. We can choose from our current supply list. So anything we already have. And from here we can search. We can find anything matching across part number or description. 
We'll just add that simply by just entering the quantities that we need to have on this particular quote. As soon as we hit save, it'll add on any non-zero items onto the quote. We can override these if we need to. So if a particular item is more or less markup in this case, we can change the markup or we can change the charge X or ink tax. Let's go ahead and change that. And we can see the actual markup and charge ink tax have adjusted accordingly. We can also update the quantity from here too. Let's save. Now it's updated on our job. From the items in the supplies, you can reorder them. So it doesn't allow you to group items into different orders that make sense. I'm just going to go proceed, add a call out item to the quote. And I'll also add some estimated labor hours. And you can define all these roles under the administration section. Now that out of the supplies and the labour and the call out, the cost and value of each of those different areas has been calculating through. And I can see the calculated subtotal, total tax, total ink tax, different profit margins, as well as the budgeted hours per roll from above. So I head back to the main details page. I can see the total for the quote has also updated. In this case, it's time materials. So it's just directly calculated from supplies, the labor and the call out that I've added. I can choose to make this fixed price instead. I'm just going to hit OK to refresh the page. And I can override that and just give it a fixed price. From here, to send the quote to the customer, I can choose to download or email the quote. And that's just going to use a template that I've got selected there. So right now I'm going to choose to download the quote. And we can see that's automatically saved. I choose my template type. And that's given me my quote in PDF format. And again, the quote formats are completely customizable. And it's basically anything you can achieve in Word, you can achieve in the score of quote. And you can also start with an existing quote template you may have now in Word. And again, we'll run through all the details in a later video for this. Going back to the quote details now, if the customer comes back and say they want to go ahead with this quote, we can simply with one click convert this quote into a job. And that will take all the items we have on the quote, all the labor items, and convert it directly into our job. And now we've got a direct quote versus job comparison. And we can see here most of the numbers are identical. And these can change over the job to be more or less than what we had budgeted for. We can see at the moment the actual labor cost is zero, and that's because this will come from the actual check-ins and timeshare entries against this job, and the base pay rates and employment costs of the users that are attached to those. So for now, if we're off to the scheduler, we can book this job in, we can drag it off onto the there from unscheduled items, and then it would appear in the different apps as well. Um, and then basically the workflow takes over from there. So we can invoice, we can collect payments, we can push the invoice to our accounting package. And all those different sections we'll go through in further videos down the track. Um, thanks for watching and please do check out our other videos.